Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today I'm going to be doing a video that a fair few of you have been asking about in the comments of my other videos. Um, it's finally here. I'm going to be reviewing Infinite Dress by David Foster Wallace. So before we go into anything vaguely specific, I just want to preface this by saying that Infinite Jest is by far the hardest fiction book I've ever read. Um, the hardest book I've ever read is still going to stay with Good Leisure Bark, but that one is non-fiction. Fiction-wise, this is a bit of a beast. Infinite Jest is a massive novel. Um, I'm not going to hold it up the way through. Um, it's 981 pages long and has around um, 100 pages of footnotes at the end as well. Uh, not only that, but the text is absolutely tiny. I'm going to see whether or not my camera can manage to play nicely for you. There you go, hopefully you can kind of get the gist of that. Um, and the notes and errata are in a smaller text still. It's huge. <laughs> But its size isn't what makes it so difficult. I've read longer books than Infinite Jest. I read It by Stephen King last year and read that in probably about half the time and didn't struggle with that at all. The length is not what makes this book difficult, but it is one of the aspects that makes it a bit more challenging to get through. The thing that makes it so difficult is the language use. So, David Foster Wallace loves words. Um, I think that's fair to say. The language is incredibly specific. Um, he will always try and find the exact word for a phrase or a feeling as opposed to elaborating with a sentence and the book's that long so <laughs> you can kind of get the gist of how much is packed in there. He also uses a lot of archaic words, um, he will use sort of medical terminology uh, where a word doesn't exist that he wants one he'll make one up so there's lots of neologisms in there too. Um, there are some that people tend to call sort of Wallace neologisms in that they only exist within this book um, and that does put a barrier up somewhat in terms of understanding it. Um, there is a wiki which I will link down below if anyone is looking to read this book I class the wiki as essential um, to get through it. And Infinite Jest was actually even longer to start with. I think his first manuscript would have come out a 1600 page book and his editor said I really like it, but no one's going to be able to read this book if it's that long. And the copy we have is a much condensed um, version of what Wallace originally tried to put out there. I'm glad for that, I have to say. Um, and Wallace also uses, as I say, a number of different unique words. It was a real challenge for me, vocabulary-wise, to go through and to understand this. There was a lot of learning that had to happen alongside the reading of this book. Um, the stat says that he used a little over 20,000 unique words to write this book, which is an awful lot. He also really enjoys using acronyms. Um, sometimes they will have explanations, sometimes they won't. Uh, so you're left sort of open to interpret what potentially this acronym means, what it's relating to, and they're vital. They're, they are throughout the text. Um, and really for this book, the text is so dense, each word is vital to understand the sentence you're working in, the paragraph you're working in, ultimately the novel as a whole. So it is, it puts a lot of pressure on the reader to bother reading closely and to spend time looking up sometimes even the roots of words. Um, so we're talking sort of, you know, Greek, Latin roots potentially to try and find what he's meaning by each word or acronym um, so that you can tear apart the text a little bit. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about what Infinite Jest is because um, all I really knew going in was that Infinite Jest was a book that a lot of people found really difficult and that a lot of people loved. And I'm a reader who really enjoys a challenge. Um, I will have a go at stuff even if I think it might potentially be uh, too difficult for me or um, that I might not be able to do it because I want to try. And I didn't know all that much about the storyline going in. That was my sort of idea of Infinite Jest was this difficult book. Uh, but I think it helps just to know a little bit about it. Um, the novel's set in a sort of dystopian near future. Um, it's mainly focused sort of around the United States' relationship with Canada and Mexico, although we have some sort of allusions to the rest of the world stage, although to be perfectly honest, it is a very American book. Um, and we follow a whole host of characters. There are hundreds of characters in Infinite Jest. There's no way I could go through all of them. I'm going to go through sort of groups, so where the, where the characters sit, almost. Um, so one of the main centres is a sort of elite 
boarding school for children who are destined to become professional tennis players. Um, it's sort of like a sports academy almost. Um, the focus is certainly on the tennis, although they have an incredibly rigorous academic um, routine that flows through alongside that. Um, the second sort of main grouping is a drug recovery centre and um, individuals there are dealing with all different kinds of substance abuse issues, sort of alcoholism through up to hard drugs. And the third that's sort of worthy of note is a terrorist cell whose activities are born out of these sort of schisms that have occurred um, with America and Canada's relations. Now the book does not spoon feed you any of this. Um, the way it's told is as though it were being told in a contemporary setting, if that makes any kind of sense. So ordinarily when you have a dystopian, when you have a fantasy novel, you'll have some form of world building at the beginning um, to settle the reader into this new reality. Infinite Jest has nothing of that sort. You are thrown directly into the storyline and it's assumed that you will gather the knowledge as you go along. To be fair, you do, but it is hard going. The characters, even though there are so many of them, are really beautifully formed. Um, most, if not all of them, felt like potentially real people or maybe sort of, I don't know, images of, of people, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, but none of them felt sort of hastily thrown into the story. They all felt as though they had a backstory, even if that was never gone into, and I admired that a great deal about the writing. Sometimes I think the book felt a little bit like Russian dolls. So you have tiny little character studies or tiny little pieces around the world, um, which might be just a sentence long. And actually in cases, there is one word that can twist a whole sentence, a whole paragraph, and a whole section of text, which is surrounded by the larger story of whichever of these three camps you're in, which is then cocooned in sort of the setting of Infinite Jest and again the themes. And in order to understand the book, I think you do need to step up through those lines and try and understand the novel in those ways all at the same time. The writing is in part absolutely gorgeous. Um, there were times when Wallace explained a situation or a feeling um, in a way that was just so perfect, just so well observed, um, but something that I hadn't necessarily considered before or even seen before. Um, and it was really striking actually how, despite the density, which does detract from it, we'll talk a little bit more about that soon, that there was beauty in the writing itself. There are also a great number of themes that Wallace is wrestling with in this book. Um, just to sort of go over a few, um, entertainment is a big deal in this book. The central storyline, um, if you can consider there to be a sort of central storyline in a book like this, um, is sort of the search for this essential piece of entertainment which, when viewed, sends its viewers into a kind of catatonic state in which um, this piece of media is the most exciting and sort of titillating thing that they can possibly conceive of, and they will watch themselves to death. Um, entertainment is a huge piece in Infinite Jest, um, as are concepts surrounding it. So entertainment, the nature of entertainers, um, the pressures on entertainers such as the children in the sports college, um, the audience and what an audience does in terms of entertainment. Um, the piece is actually film, so film is another thing that's discussed. Um, criticism of film and how that plays into the way film exists and grows. Um, there's also sort of a wider sort of thing about the relationships between beauty and deformity. Um, and how people view those things from outside and also function and dysfunction. It's a novel of sort of balanced opposites, I think. Um, there are hundreds of themes, I think, that you could pick out from this. Nationalism is also obviously a massive um, piece, as you can kind of tell from the setting. It's very hard to even try and brush the surface of this book in one video and in a coherent manner. Um, because you have to realise that this book took up full two months of my free time to read.
and understand and I could have read it quicker and I know I could have read it quicker but I would have lost so much. Every time there was a word or, a, or sort of a situation I didn't understand I went away and I researched it and I tried to make it so that I could understand the book as a whole and I don't really think you can without that. I don't still think that I really completely understand this book. I don't. Um, <laughs> But I think you would lose so much by just reading it and saying, oh, I don't know that word, that's fine, we'll read on. Um, and it is something that I think you either need a lot of time, a lot of space to talk about, or you can you can give outlines. And that's what I'm trying to do here because I don't want to have to make a whole series on this video uh, or videos on this one book. So I'm just going to give you some of my thoughts um, on the book as a whole. I think that David Foster Wallace is a genius and um, I really mean that. I think it's a very rare intellectual talent that he has as an author. However, he seems to be in his writing, I've only read one of his pieces, it may be something that he's worked into Infinite Jest, that he's either dismissive of or um, unaware of his audience. I don't think he's unaware. I think that as he's writing, he's actually quite aware of his audience but doesn't care too much whether or not they are enjoying the book itself. It's as if he feels the work is more important than the enjoyment of it, which is an odd experience for readers to have, because ordinarily things are fairly well structured around encouraging us to keep reading the book. I don't think that's true of Infinite Jest. There were many times when I was reading this where I thought I just can't anymore, um, that I was mentally tired from reading it and that I wasn't sure I was going to get anything from it um, and it really isn't a book that is reader friendly. I think what it reminded me of above anything else was um, those odd little kind of art films. So I used to watch a lot of films. I don't really watch a lot of films anymore because I read a lot now um, but I went through a stage where I watched an awful awful lot of films. I'm talking probably 10 to 20 a week I would have said. And just by nature of that, as you get into a hobby more, you, you go down sort of less popular avenues. This reminds me of one of the very um, experimental sort of short films. And it's playing with a lot of themes and actually the creator exploring that theme for themselves in their medium is more important than the, it being a clear message that's being given to the viewer. Um, and it's also open to interpretation, so I think lots of different people could read Infinite Jest and take lots of different things from it. I ended up giving it four stars, and I think that's fair. Um, I've never given a book that high a rating before that I've wanted to put down midway through, but there's something about this book that I think it deserves that. I can't give it five, um, because I did want to put it down, and because some parts of it bored the absolute hell out of me. But as a, as a thing, as, as a piece of work, I think it's really impressive. Um, and I think there's an awful lot of prestige attached to this book. And I don't want this to be a sort of snobby video saying, I've done this, isn't that wonderful? But I do think there's something attached to that prestige in terms of value. This was really hard work. Um, and I applaud anyone who has sat down and read the entire thing. I can say, if I'm being honest, if I'd known how hard it was going to be, I probably wouldn't have started it. And I think if I hadn't been reading it with someone else, I wouldn't have been able to finish it. Um, knowing that you guys knew I was reading it, and the fact that I buddy read it with Philippa, meant that I finished this book. Um, and so I think there is something to that prestige because it is so hard. And I don't know whether I should be recommending this to you or not. I think if you're watching this, you'll know whether this is the kind of book that you want to read or whether this is something that just doesn't appeal to you at all. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those two camps. I, I think probably if I'd known that this was going to be so intense and for so long, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have read it. I would have waited for another point in my life. And we picked it up when I was a bit older. Um, but I'm very glad I've done it. It reminds me a little bit of D of E, because um, I did D of E when I was a kid, and I remember sort of trekking along and only thinking about how heavy my bag was and how the next hill was so high and how I couldn't do it, and hating it, hating every minute that I was out there in the rain and the horribleness and not being able to sleep on anything that was comfortable, and that was all I thought when I was going through it. 
and afterwards I'm so glad that I've done it and that's exactly the same situation I think I had with Infinite Jest. I really didn't like reading it. I very much like the fact that I've read it and the fact that um, I've been able to consider the things that are in this book because I think it's really interesting I think it's very clever and I do think it's different to anything else that I've read so far. It's on a sort of different level um, in terms of its ambition, I think. I really, really hope that this has been helpful. I have three and a half pages of notes that I've been going through just to try and get this in some kind of coherent order. I appreciate it's not as thorough as my book reviews normally are, and I do try my best to um, you know, give you a clear recommendation or or otherwise if I don't like it. I don't think I can do this. I think this book is something that's very personal as to whether or not this is something you want to be doing. Um, and as I say, I don't think there's anything wrong if you watch this video and say that sounds like a book that I could not care less about and I really can't be bothered with that. Um, and I can also understand some people will see this video and will think that this sounds like their sort of dream book. Um, and that's just the nature of things. It, I think it depends to some extent um, on whether reading is necessarily challenging for you. So it's not to say that people who might not want to read this might not enjoy challenging work. But if the point of reading for you is to challenge yourself intellectually, I think probably this is the kind of book you'll enjoy. If reading is an enjoyment for you, you might not enjoy this book because I don't think it was all that enjoyable to read. Um, and as I say, neither one of the two are actually a, pro a problem. Um, I only read for enjoyment. Most of the time I'm reading, I will choose things that challenge me to some extent, but I really want to like the book because it's something I do to relax and something I do as a hobby. Um, but every now and again I'll choose something that I am reading because it's challenging. I'm reading as an exercise for my brain. Um, and that's kind of what I think this is. So yeah, hopefully this has been helpful in some ways and let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know whether or not I have made any kind of sense in talking about this book. If you have read the book down below, then feel free to chat about it. Um, I had a great time chatting about it whilst I was reading it with Philippa and I'm more than happy to chat with other people about it on their sort of thoughts as well. Um, and I will see you soon in my next video, which is going to be my Man Booker shortlist predictions. I'll see you then. Bye guys. I essentially have these vets who are able to enfold and delete sections of their memory. Um, and it has some sort of um, untoward consequences, I suppose.